Welcome to our update on Australian property market. We run it from the sunny climes of Queensland, where by definition we discuss waves, impulsive waves and corrective waves around Australia. The forecast for this week according to SQM is Sydney flat, Melbourne up, Brisbane up. If I've missed any capital city, make sure you put it in your comments below. So why are we here? Because interest rates are up for the 12th time and we want to know whether there is more rises to come. How it will affect property prices and broader economy. Is the economy stupid? Let's see how the 10 year bonds are going. They directly affect the US dollar and global liquidity. Is the best measure of where the markets are going. If the bond yield goes up, markets suffer. There's an indirect correlation between short-term rates set by central banks and long-term rates like mortgages. As you can see, we are in a bull run on yields and we are about to hit a small correction followed by another spike in yields and probably interest rates. How long will it take? I'd say not long. Next three months? What happens after? A noticeable correction in yields and interest rates for the rest of the year and well into 2024. The dollar is probably going to follow a similar pattern. It's all fresh sugar that will get pumped into the bloodstream of the economy. Yay! So how does it translate into the Australian housing market? Interest rates are gonna go down eventually. Let's analyze the longest chart available, illustrating the price trend in Bitcoin, or I mean Australian house prices. This one is from BIS and is ranging from 1970 to 2020. If you find a longer time frame, please leave the link below. As you can see, we've had a whopping run since 1970s. All up, just guess it. Put your suggestions in the comments below. The first wave started at least in 1970 and lasted until 1974 and delivered 14% increase in prices, followed by a 4-year correction. The third wave lasted between 1978 to 2008 and brought up to 26%. The correction that followed was surprisingly shallow given that we had just come out of the 2008 liquidity crisis. Central banks managed to inject plenty of liquidity into the markets it sparked the start of the final wave in the second quarter of 2009, which is still going on and so far brought up 39% on the housing index. It's hard to believe the government and the banking industrial complex managed to pump it this high for so long, especially over such difficult times like the pandemic, when we were on the cusp of a recession. It's really worth analyzing those difficult days in detail. In order to see particular waves within the fifth wave, we must take a more granular look at individual suburbs, as if taking a magnifying glass to analyze a photograph pixel by pixel. Every week on this channel, we are going to inspect different suburbs in key Australian cities. The first episode is going to be no different. As the SQM research gets updated every week, I'm going to regularly post updated prices. So make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel as I've got more good stuff prepared for you in the pipeline. Okay, here it is. Melbourne suburb of Camberwell. As usual for the SQM, the data goes back as far as 2010 which is already within the final wave of a major secular bull. From their chart, we can deduce we are entering the final stages of the last wave. First one ended here and delivered almost 39%. Third one ended here with additional 55%. Now we are pretty much in the middle of the fifth one. We just need to muddle through this correction which has few more weeks to go and shouldn't go below this resistance level. It is correlated with an increase in 10-year bonds that are climbing higher 
Once they go into a correction, you should see a reversal in house prices and the beginning of the final upward wave within the larger fifth wave. As we know, there is no more new waves up past this point in the wave theory. We are going to end this large cycle that spanned for over 50 years. The question is when it all breaks down. The time frame is always uncertain as the change of the sentiment is as slow as changing the direction on the Titanic. And we are sitting on the Titanic, staring at the incoming icebergs on the horizon. I have my initial point in time where we are going to face another liquidity crisis like in 2008. This will trigger the end of the cycle. But this ship won't go down without fireworks. When you look at the chart, it has an accelerating rate of increase. That means the house prices are growing faster late in the cycle. It means you should expect some spectacular increases in some ritzy postcodes as you are going to enter a schizophrenic phase in the economy. On one hand, people are going to lose jobs and companies are going to shut down. On the other hand, the houses and stock market are going to boom for the last time. If only I knew what is going to cause such imbalances and inequality and, and the rise of asset prices. Is it perhaps caused by migration? We will get into it in the following weeks where we're going to analyze all factors that contributed to the push of this bubble. I'm just going to point out that the highest rate of increase took place in the past three years which coincided with an unprecedented event caused by a novel virus of unspecified origins that made all governments of the Western world and their central banks to inject trillions of dollars into the economy. On that note, I'm going to leave you, dear viewer. Have a chat about it with your mates at work and warn them about incoming icebergs. Later in a cycle, we're going to analyze the following patterns in each suburb. Meanwhile, enjoy the incoming wave. Over and out.